Um, I, how about this one? I constantly hear about, uh, you know, Robin D'Angelo, very popular, Jimmy uh, Kimmel's show, always talking about privilege. Now, I cannot imagine why I would ever, say, walk up to a Jewish person and say, you have privilege, your people have higher incomes than whites. Asians, you people are privileged, you have higher incomes than whites. Black Americans are privileged because they are better off than black librarians, so they need to embrace their privilege and read this book called Black Fragility. And women have privilege because they're less likely to be homeless and they have longer life expectancies. The only reason I would ever do that is if I were Iago, the Shakespearean character trying to divide people based on lies and technicalities. Why on earth is this privilege something they put so much focus on? Um, because it works. <laughs> <laughs> because it works, that's why. The, so the concept, I'm just going to cut straight to bare bones. I've not really talked about this publicly much yet. I put it on Twitter, but I haven't really dialogued about it. But the concept of privilege is a Maoist concept. It is a concept to divide society into groups to stratify, in fact, or to identify stratification or claim stratification society to divide people into the haves and the have-nots and to put stink on the have. There is no, like, privilege is not a positive word. You know, I might say it's a, my privilege, you know, it's a privilege to be able to speak with you or a privilege to, to appear on your show. And that's one thing, of course, all these words have multiple meanings, but that's a different thing entirely to say you are privileged, which means, what does privilege mean? It means, oh, well, you have unearned advantages and you're probably, you probably think you deserve them. That is just something that is meant to knock people down. This is legitimately the same concept that was used uh with the people who had, you know, standing in society in the Mao, Mao's Cultural Revolution. It is a Maoist idea. They use it because it works. Because exactly what you said about Iago, because it does divide people, and that is the goal. It is it is the goal to get people to um, divide themselves across these lines of stratification, to make it so that, say, poor whites and poor blacks now can't unify and realize that the maybe elites of society are screwing them both at the same way because now the white people are privileged over the black people and they have their own um, class conflict that they now have to have in terms of privilege and they have to fight with each other rather than realizing that they're in the same circumstance. Uh, so it's a very divisive kind of thing. It's meant to knock down the people who are, are being labeled as privileged. It's meant to create a scapegoating situation of those of those groups. Um, and it's also meant to induce shame. If you look at the Maoist Cultural Revolution, that was the entire purpose, was to shame people, publicly shame people, humiliate people into doing the bidding of the Red Guard, into doing the bidding of the Maoists. And that's exactly what the purpose of the concept of privilege is, is just to shame the people who are labeled as privileged, as needing to to reflect until they understand why they should be ashamed and then to use that shame as a motivator to work in so-called solidarity on behalf of the people who have less privilege or who are oppressed. Um, it is a pretty vile manipulation tactic. There's there's pretty much nothing nice about it. Uh, but it's also a means, you know, when you attach it to something like race of doing racial scapegoating, um, which is extremely poisonous and extremely divisive, extremely dangerous. The idea is that if you can find any disparity in outcome, that disparity must be a causal result of discrimination. However, they never apply this to, say, police killings. For instance, 95% of those killed by police are male. Now, is that because there's a terrible sexism problem against men uh, by the police? Well, men commit most of the violent crime men are more likely to resist. That does not justify anything that happens. It's simply an alternative explanation as opposed to discrimination. If you look at the number of homeless people, men are 50%, yet they're much more likely to be homeless. If you look at combat deaths, workplace deaths, homicides, suicides, men are overrepresented in all of these. Why aren't uh, we hearing large-scale calls for... Uh, women are only 6% of workplace deaths. We need to bump that up to 50% because they're 50% and equality is inherently good and 
They need to commit suicide more because suicides are disproportionately male. They're hogging up all the graves in the suicide portion of the cemetery. Of course not. These are the results of people's choices much more so than it is the result of discrimination. But the idea that there's privilege is, uh, is of course, just a, another uh, debunked leftist conspiracy theory. Progressives are very proud to stand against slavery. See, it was really bad when some people forced other people to work under terrible conditions against their will. However, left out of this discussion are the millions and millions of straight white men enslaved under the worst conditions known as war. Conscription, sometimes called the draft in the United States, is the mandatory enlistment of people in a national service, most often a military service. Compare that with slavery and enslavement. Both the state and the condition of being a slave who is someone forbidden to quit their service for another person while treated as property. So far worse than any of the whippings that we've seen images of uh, right here. We have N.E. Wallace in 1918 before he uh, was in the military and you have uh, his face uh, completely melted off. So the idea that, well, you know, straight white men are in charge, therefore they're all on the same page with all the other straight white men is just more uh, sexist, racist uh, conspiracy theories that uh, the, the left likes to perpetrate. It's like saying, you know, the people in power speak English. Therefore, English speaking privilege is uh, really what we need to focus on. Th th that is a technical, arbitrary alignment of similarities as opposed to a principled similarity. Here is the Selective Service Act of 1917, uh, the, the document itself. Such draft as herein provided shall be based upon liability to military service of all male citizens or male persons, not alien enemies. It goes on for quite a while. Well, here we have forced labor for exclusively men. Uh, not only, you know, going back to the Civil War, but the First World War, the Second World War, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. So, white male slavery has existed much closer to the present than forced uh, racist cotton-picking slavery, but it doesn't fit the left's agenda. So, uh, the idea that uh, straight white males have just been, you know, s flying through history with uh, n no uh, r real hurdles in their way, of course, is just a uh, leftist lie. Even today, if you go to the Selective Service website, it discusses registration for men ages 18 to 25. Selective Service registration is required by law. Now, they will often say, well, it's not enacted. Uh, it's not really enforced. It's just technically on the books. <laughs> Could you imagine a law on the books? All blacks ages 18 to 25 must register for mandatory agricultural work in case there's a food shortage. It's just it's just a public service. It's not like anything nefarious. We're just going to enslave them if we have to, but blacks only. Well, it's men only, so uh, the uh, same discriminatory principle applies. Now, in a last-ditch effort to save their historical worldview, because once they realize that uh, the worst thing is slavery— and that's what America needs to apologize for. But actually, most slaves were straight white men. It, it, their entire world is completely thrown upside down. In a last-ditch effort, they will say something like, well, you got paid to do uh, draft work, and when you were in the military, you were compensated. As though money is the issue. The issue is forced labor. Uh, not that, uh, yes, I enslaved that person, but then I gave them... Uh, five dollars. Well, that's still slavery. What makes it slavery is the lack of voluntary willingness on both parties. It is literally like saying, well, slavery wasn't really slavery because they got a house, so they got shelter, so they were compensated. See, compensating slaves no longer makes it slavery. Uh, they were alive, so obviously they got food. Obviously they got water. They probably got breaks. They probably got a lot of camaraderie and fun time and song singing with fellow slaves. So really, it's not that bad. That is just as bad as saying, you know, conscription isn't really slavery because they got compensated, la la la. Another uh, thing that the male privilege conspiracy theorists leave out is circumcision. This is one of uh, the first experiences a lot of men have in their entire lives, and it is uh, one of the worst pains probably a baby can ever go through. This is the removal of the foreskin from the human penis. In the most common procedure, the foreskin is extended with forceps in prepubescent children. 
its normal adhesion to the glands must also be broken with a probe. Then a circumcision device may be placed after which the foreskin is excised. Now, you can hear the babies screaming in excruciating pain, the male babies, and uh, th this doesn't really cross the mind of people who are very into sexism. See, uh, mansplaining is terrible and it's evil and it must be combated. Uh, genitally mutilating male babies to the point where they're screaming in terror as their first experience out of the womb. Well, you know, I'm not really sure if uh, anything can be said about that. It's, at least it's not man spreading. Ooh, that's really where we got to go after. Th they go after these easy, trivial, nonsensical arguments because they don't matter. Now, every disparity between whites and blacks or whites and Hispanics could also be said for whites and Jews or Asians and whites. So whenever they leave out groups like Asians or Jews, first of all, that's terrible racist discrimination. Second of all, you're not getting the whole picture. If you look at median U.S. household income by selected ethnic group in 2018, you can see that whites are about 12 when it comes to income. Uh, so that means there is Indian privilege, Taiwanese privilege, Chinese privilege, Japanese privilege, Pakistani American privilege, Filipino privilege, Indonesian privilege, Korean privilege, Cambodian privilege, Hmong privilege, and Vietnamese privilege. We, we really got to discuss this and, and, uh, and have a conversation about this, of course. We, we never hear the opposite. This is all about creating a... Uh, boogeyman group and then an oppressed group. An oppressed and an oppressor. They tried it with the Occupy Wall Street. The 1% versus the 99%. Now it's men versus women. Whites versus blacks. Uh, I'm sure next it'll be old versus young. Anytime they can create a boogeyman, you see this all the time in foreign policy, that is the ultimate justification for why they should have tons of power. Because only a a really, really big, powerful government can solve this evil, terrible problem. The reality is that the wrong enemy is, uh, you know, this rich versus poor, white versus black, men versus women. The right enemy are people who achieve their ends in life by initiating violence against peaceful people. This applies to every government program by definition, and it applies to people with no institutional power who are just, you know, small petty thieves, small liars, bank robbers, rapists, even if they are not the CEO of Raytheon, they still achieve their ends at the expense of others without the consent of their fellow human beings. So for those of you who don't accept this libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist principle of uh, th those Enemies in society are those who achieve their ends violently instead of voluntarily. Uh, what you are perpetuating is obvious racism and sexism. But look how Richard Spencer uses the same logic when having a discussion with a black gentleman about the reality and privilege of race. Very, very bad idea. And um... Africans have benefited from their experience with white supremacy. And we just have to look at the... Really? Uh, I'm just yeah. going to leave that out there. I'm just going to leave that out. You know, that is not even worth challenging. You have that. It. Africans have... Life's, uh, look, at the average, look at the average life of an African-American in the United States. It's far better than any African living in Africa. Really? So slavery was good for them? I, it, look, they benefited from being in a different nation than their own. No doubt. Really? Yeah, no really? doubt. How can you deny that? Sorry? How can you... There you have it, using the same exact progressive racist logic. Right-wing racists use it just with different groups. There's a great meme, you know, listing all black privileges. The uh, ability to take pride in your race without fear of persecution and 50 other things. It's just all terribly divisive. There's a great meme of a little white girl and a little Japanese girl. Blaming her for slavery is like blaming her for Pearl Harbor. Mark Passio has a great slide. He says... The one true divide, there is only one true divide that separates humanity into two distinct types of individuals. The criterion for the, this divide is whether or not an individual believes in authority and therefore believes that there is legitimacy to slavery. So whether it's a dictator trying to enslave you by initiating violence against you or your neighbor. No principal difference, only a difference in scale. The economist at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Murray N. Rothbard, says it best when he says, it is the state that is robbing all classes, rich and poor, black and white, worker 
and businessman alike. It is the state that is ripping us all off. It is the state that is the common enemy of mankind. Thank you for watching Keith Knight. Don't tread on anyone in the Libertarian Institute.